Hi, thanks for tuning in to Astro Awani and you're watching In Real Tea with me, Nawati Adnan, and my good friend here, Victor Lim. Thank you so much, Victor, for making yeah. your time with us. Uh, it's been a long while since we last had our break and also since we last meet up. How's the property market uh, doing so far? Uh, yeah, this year seems like it's uh, much, much better. <laughs> okay. So looking at the haze outside, because yes. we can't obviously do our first segment outside where we normally do. Yep. Uh, so we take it in uh, in Ishin Japanese restaurant mm -hmm. over in uh, Old Klang Road mm -hmm. to talk about uh, KL South. How did, did it originate, the name KL South? Look at the map, uh, seems like the southern part of KL seems like uh, is a natural choice or natural area that the uh, the city will expand to, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, there seems like there's a lot of uh, land uh, still available towards the uh, southern part of uh, KL. Uh, so that's why I think uh, even the government now are actually focusing on the southern part of uh, KL because uh, it seems like it's uh, it's natural and it's also very strategic uh, for um, you know I mean uh, for the lot of development to be you know to be happening here. If you look at the uh, you know uh, Klang Valley MRT. Mm. If you look at the uh, the line, uh, of course, is all the way from Sungai Bulu, mm -hmm. and then uh, where it passes through the cities, and it follows the. Uh, uh, Cheras Path, you know, mm -hmm. and all the way to Kajang. So even the MRT line is actually, you know, working towards the south. So with that, I think a lot of uh, development will be happening in uh, around the uh, MRT area, you know, uh, whereby it's, uh, you know, more convenient and uh, also that's why we call it a greater KL. Mm -hmm. you know, in the past, uh, probably you can't stay so far away. Exactly. Yeah, if you're working in KL, yeah. you know. But with this, uh, all this infrastructure in place, I guess yes. Uh, yeah, I mean KL, you know, can actually have a wider boundary, and people can stay further away, and yet they find it, um, you know, very convenient mm -hmm. to travel to work, and also, of course, with this. Actually, um, the government expected the economy, you know, will, will actually boost due to the greater KL. Mm -hmm. yep. And mm -hmm. um, obviously, we have seen uh, that the Kuala Lumpur city centre is really congested. Yes. Um, not only by uh, residences, but right. also by commercial areas yes. and also businesses. Right. So hence, the government would like to for the people to mm -hmm. stay in the suburbs mm -hmm. and work in the city, like Correct. you said earlier. So does Correct. that mean? that the price of uh, the residences and also the commercial would also boom uh, you know just as how as the numbers of people are really escalating in, in terms yeah, of residences. Definitely I think we can also see some of the example from our neighboring country namely mm. Singapore you know uh, wherever there is an MRT station you know those properties surrounding the MRT station will definitely boom and the prices will go up steadily. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I mean, there's no doubt about that. I mean, if you're an investor, obviously, I think these are some of the areas that you can look into. Mm -hmm. uh, if you buy into this kind of area, of course, um, the chances for the uh, property to to the capital appreciation to, to grow, of course, uh, is there, you know. And because of the infrastructure, I like I said earlier, uh, this will create a lot of opportunity, uh, not only for the developer, but of, of course uh, for the uh, government as well, you know, to serve the uh, public uh, better. Just to clarify things, because I'm a bit confused here when you say about KL South, what are the boundaries and the vicinity of KL South? Because if I were to extend it up to Kajang <laughs> or Bangi, it's no longer in that WP, Lai yeah, or Kuala Lumpur right, vicinity, that's right, that's right? right? So, so yeah. how do I gauge these boundaries <laughs> of KL South? That's why currently if you look at the map, uh, I would say the boundary is somewhere at, I mean you talk about Southern Park, yeah. somewhere near uh, probably Salak Selatan, you know, or part of Sungai Busi. Uh, but yeah, with the uh, MRT line, you know, uh, in place, uh, of course, probably we'll probably look at the wider area, including Blakong, you know, probably all the way to, to, to Kajang, you see. So that's, that's, that's why they call it a greater KL, you know, so the city actually expanded, expanded you know. Yeah, when we talk about uh, the people who live here, um, yeah. obviously, uh, having been here for a lot of years, yes. this area, yeah. how would the coming in of people who would love to purchase uh, a property here mm -hmm. would change the whole facade of this area? 
Uh, yeah, I mean, as time goes by, I think uh, location like even uh, Oakland Road, Sungai Busi, uh, it used to be, um, uh, and we call it an average location whereby the property prices are just uh, on average. Yeah, but of course, with the uh, uh, development coming, uh, especially the Greater KL and also the 1MDB development where they're going to turn the uh, Songhai Busi Airport it's going to be into a uh, massive uh, mixed development lo I mean, area. So basically all this I, I, I believe will definitely add value to the, those properties surrounding all this development, especially the old area, like even Old Clang Road, you know. Mm. Um, I was told that uh, some uh, landowner are asking for close to 500 ringgit per square foot, you know. Wow. Yeah, which is uh, <laughs> something which we have not heard before, but it, it is happening, you know. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, and what contributes to this development? Uh, I mean, for instance, uh, what are the sexy bits? the sexy development that we can find here, especially here in, in, in Old Pine Road? Yeah, I mean, uh, especially recent years, there are quite a number of uh, uh, launching. Uh, I mean, namely, uh, if you drive around Old Pine Road, you can uh, see that uh, some high-end uh, developer mm -hmm. and also high-end uh, condos are coming, like the Wolf, uh, uh -huh. uh, Wolf uh, Suites, they call it the, the uh, it's part of the South KL as well. So all these developments are coming and, and uh, I was told that they are selling for 1,001 ringgit per square foot. You know, imagine in Old Clang Road, yeah, the pricing has gone up to uh, over 1,000 uh, ringgit per square foot. That is something, you know, yeah. Mm. Mm. And, and having said that, mm -hmm. who would buy in? And then uh, I can see that uh, traffic congestion is not at all easing. <laughs> so who's really buying into this? <laughs> like I said, because the city is ex expanding, there are actually more and more people uh, coming into KL and, and of course stay in KL. Uh, that's the reason why, of course, not only local people whereby they're from our station, we also saw that a lot of foreigners are coming into KL and to stay. So that's why it is not a surprise that uh, people are willing to go further a little bit, yeah, to to you know to buy their property, uh, and it seems like you know um, the southern part of uh, KL is the perfect choice, mm. yeah, because of the infrastructure, yeah, because of the uh, of course uh, the MRT and the the existing infrastructure and the facility. That's the reason why I feel that. Uh, you know, yeah, South South you know South KL is actually a good choice for for, for many mostly. yeah from whether it's for uh, for own use or also for investment. Yeah. What's the rental yield like currently? Of course, when you talk about the rental yield, on average uh, for residential property, normally it's below four percent. Yeah, uh, for commercial probably at uh, five percent and below. Mm -hmm. uh, but still, having said that. Uh, People are still buying into all this location, especially towards the south. Uh, it's because I, I, I know I feel they saw the potential. Uh, same as myself, I also saw the potential because it seems like the growth. There's no more, no more room uh, within the KL city itself, and the northern part seems like uh, it's not so popular. That's why I'm saying, even the MRT line is going towards the south. There must be something. Mm. you know, uh, on, on this part of the world, so-called, yeah. Okay, um, mm -hmm. now briefly, mm -hmm. um, aside from what you've talked about, yes. it's post-election. Since oh, you're yeah. here, I would like to grab um, your <laughs> first opinion on this. Uh, would this be the mm -hmm. good time to buy? Yeah, uh, I mean, as an agent, I can uh, yeah say this is a good time because uh, even ourselves, we saw the business pick up. Uh, people tend to uh, yeah, start to buy now was because I think they have been holding back mm -hmm. uh, before the election and it seems like everything is yeah. moving it's now. The wait yeah. and see is no yes. longer wait no and, longer see. Wait and see. Now, yeah. Yeah. So now it's action time. <laughs> so actually definitely yeah, our business has, uh, has grown and uh, it seems like transaction is getting more and uh -huh. more. So I would say this is a good time. And uh, yeah, I mean, uh, and especially if you are buying for long term, uh, Any time is a good time to buy, mm. you know. Yeah. Thank you so much, Victor, yeah. for your time. You're well, there you go. Uh, KL South would be the ideal location if you like to buy in for investment or also for stay. Uh, and since uh, Victor has already mentioned Wolf Suite KL South, that's where we're going to go for the next segment. So stay tuned on In Realty. <laughs> Thank you. 
Hi, and we are back on In Realty. Uh, so this time, N.K. Tong is uh, here with me from BKP. Hi. He's going to wine and dine me and talk about Verb Suites in KL South. Okay, N.K., it's so good to have you back uh, on Thank In you. Realty. Yeah. So I'm all excited. I know what Verb Suites in Mount Kiara is all about, but this one I think is a whole different take of uh, Verb Suites in KL South. Yes. But first, talk to us about how, of all the places that BKP would normally uh, you know, venture in, you ended up here in KL South or Old Klang Road. Okay. Well, thank you, uh, Lina. First, we, we look at our customers. They, they've been uh, very uh, loyal with us and they've been very uh, interested in Mount Kiara and also some in KLCC, mm. uh, where we will be going eventually. But uh, what we also realised is they wanted to get out of those two locations and look at other up-and-coming hotspots. And one uh, obvious location was here in KLCL. Mm -hmm. So that's how we uh, started looking here. We found the opportunity and we made the investment. Okay, so what is Verve Suites this time in KLCL? Well, um, it's interesting because when we first started out, we looked at this location, we said, you know, KL South is up and coming, so let's do something here. But uh, as we um, looked at this project, it evolved. I mean, we didn't start by saying, let's put a Verve Suites in KL South. At first we thought, or maybe this area is still a bit new, it's still up and coming, it's not ready. But as we uh, brainstormed and look at the ideas for this project, it actually evolved to mm. one day we just woke up and said, look, it is a, it is a uh, Verse Suites, KL South. Mm. It's appropriate for that brand. So that's what, the, what we've been doing here. Talk to us about the accessibility. KL City is uh, growing. Mm. So even, even the core of the city is growing and we are now uh, could be even considered getting part of the city centre as you look at the Greater uh, Klang Valley, mm. the, the Greater KL uh, initiatives that the government's taken on. And uh, we are literally minutes away from uh, uh, the Federal Highway mm. and uh, the Mid Valley uh, conglomeration of shops and uh, office and mm. uh, facilities. That, so I think it's very convenient being very close to KL. At the same time, if you look further south of us, you know, PJ is just around the corner yeah. as well. Um, and then you have uh, all the expressways and highways connecting us to the airport, uh, to the rest of the city. So it it's really is uh, going to be among, if you look at the, the Klang Valley, it could mm -hmm. even be considered one of the uh, centres or the heart of the KL uh, Klang Valley. Mm -hmm. And uh, in Verve Suites in Mount Kiara, they are majorly uh, residential. Mm -hmm. And then you have your, you know, your fantastic hypercubes and, yeah. and, and Sky Beach. Yeah. And uh, this time it's a bit different. But before we get to that okay. unique bit, so talk to us about what does it comprise of? Like, like other Verve Suites, uh, the other Verve Suites in Mount Kiara, we, we started with um, fully furnished designer suite and, mm. and we are in one of them. Mm. And the idea was to make it very uh, easy and livable and, and also to create a, a different lifestyle in this neighbourhood. Um, a lot of projects here may be not so furnished and we thought, well, let's do something uh, fully furnished, mm. let's do it with a designer touch. At the same time, um, we have facilities uh, on the podium, uh -huh. like the swimming pool, steam room, and uh, the kids' uh, play pool, etc. Okay. So, so all the usual stuff in the podium, and then we have a, a garden, and we have a half, uh, a mini, a mini basketball court as okay. well, a half court. Yeah. On the ground floor, we have some retail. We uh -huh. have three lots there, and we're looking at uh, some perhaps F and B uh, to come in later, which will be actually accessible straight off uh, Oakland Road, okay. so they don't have to come through the condominium. So I know you have the, 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 the Sky Beach, yeah. and you have the lovely dining area, you know, the, the Sky Lounge, and uh, it's a surprise here that, yeah. you know, you know, we don't see all that, but what can we have here? <laughs> okay. So the, the Sky Beach and Sky uh, Lounge and uh, that you referred to, yeah. uh, we have in Mo Verse Suites, Mount Kiara. So when we looked at um, uh, Verse Suites, KL South, we thought, okay, let's, let's think out of our box. I mean, uh, we, were thinking always, out of our, yeah. <laughs> we were thinking of our box, then let's think of our own box. And we said, well, what, what is different? In the past, we put everything on the, on the penthouse floor. This time, we said, well, you know, Oakland Road is a very busy road. How do we make something a little bit more visible and iconic from the, mm -hmm. from the street? And we thought, instead of going all the way to the top, let's go to the middle. Um, and so we have a sky bridge that actually connects the two uh, buildings. Okay, yeah. and what can we do in the sky okay. bridge? Um, well, first we, we call it the uh, Vicarikos uh, Living Concept. Okay. So the Vicarikos Sky Bridge. And so the idea of the Vicarikos Sky Bridge is similar. We're connecting two towers. Okay. And this bridge will then uh, create a lot of activity. And just to emphasize the point, on the bridge itself, we're putting a lot of activity. Okay. Um, we're bringing back some of the uh, familiar items that people have seen before. Of course, our sky gym, the, uh, the uh, sky dining and the sky kitchen. 
but we're also introducing and an, a theatre rep also introducing some new ideas uh, we have this uh, the gym next to the gym we have like a combat zone okay so that's a, a place for people to work out on like punching bags you have a lot of uh, hidden uh, spaces in some of the uh, yeah. show units that I can see yeah. so what's the you know what's the hype about because in Montchera you can see that too but this has been taken to a different level well I, I don't know if we intentionally started <laughs> to do that but um, I guess you know, if you look at a lot of our interiors, uh, we, we are very uh, obsessed, maybe a strong word, but I'll use it anyway. We're obsessed okay. about making sure it's functional, uh, plenty of storage, and really uh, user-friendly. So sometimes, uh, you know, with these hidden corners, I'm also thinking, uh, like, like we did in our previous projects, mm -hmm. there are times when, uh, you know, we are, we're house proud, so we want to show the best front. Yeah. But then there are certain things like the study room, don't go there. So, <laughs> so we try and hide that, and I'll show that to you later. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. So it's just uh, finding a balance between what looks good and also what's functional and maybe some of the things that you don't want to see every day. Alright, uh, thank you so much NK. As always, I would love uh, to stay on and talk about this. Unfortunately, we're running out of time. So there you go. If you'd like uh, to come and you know experience a whole new birth suites and its concept, then KL South is the place to be. So with that, see you again in the next segment. Hi, thanks for tuning in. We are back on In Realty. On this segment, I have a wonderful product for you skepticals out there. If you're a skeptical like me who don't quite believe in good things come the easy way, well, here's a product for you to think upon. So with me today is uh, Eileen McHale. She's the co-founder of Yonanas. Thank you so much for flying over <laughs> thousands of miles to have this with us, Eileen. Thank so. you. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Excited to be here finally in Malaysia to bring Yo Nana. Okay, so Yo Nana is the magic word. So yes. talk to us. <laughs> How uh, it all begins for Dole and Yonanas to have created and come with a new concept like this? So we partnered with Dole mm. uh, because we believe that we can all eat a little more fruits and vegetables daily, right? Mm. Most of us don't get enough of that in our diet. And so this was just a really fun and unique way to do that. We are going to take only frozen fruit, 100% mm. frozen fruit, no dairy, no cream milk yogurt. We're going to turn it into something that looks, tastes and feels like ice cream in seconds. Okay, only if it works. Right, right? exactly. It's <laughs> the skeptics. Yeah. Exactly. So, uh, talk to us, uh, how do we start by having this healthy uh, frozen uh, fruit yogurt? I can, can I call it yogurt? Mm -hmm. you, you can call it yogurt, we like to call it yonanas. Yonanas, okay. right, right, right. But, but the point is, you know, you can take fruit, sometimes even fruit you're ready to throw away. Mm. Um, and it becomes dessert. So this is the magic. One is if you use bananas, we like to point out these bananas, those overripe spotty mm -hmm. bananas, they could even get darker than this, mm -hmm. you know, for the cake, you know, the banana cake yeah. kind. Peel them, freeze them. They're so much sweeter when they're darker. So that's the base of some recipes. Uh -huh. um, but I'm gonna show you some frozen fruit that has uh, no bananas in it, mm -hmm. and it turns into ice cream as well. Okay. So, you know, that's all it is. Frozen fruit in, you let it thaw, depending on your freezer, 10 minutes more or less, and you're gonna see how we make this in seconds come out looking So it, it doesn't matter what kind of fruit? No, it as doesn't. As long as it's frozen? As long as it's frozen. So if you like cantaloupe, mm. if you like strawberries, you know, if you like mango, all of these things can run through here. But if you also want to add a little chocolate, mm. we're going to show you how to do that. Okay, so before we go on uh, mm -hmm. starting on how it is uh, processed, I mean the fruits, into ice cream. So talk to us a little bit about the magic of the machine. Where is the heart of, of the, this whole magical uh, inspiration of this uh, machine? So this is really, it's a small compact uh -huh. machine and this is, you know, this is the the base, the motor, but this is where we grind and emulsify mm -hmm. that fruit and it comes out to turn into this like really creamy texture. So there's a simple blade cone in here and it's just the magic of the technology that turns fruit into that texture. And again, people don't believe it until they see it and then they taste it. Who, who do you actually target to? What we thought was, you know what, maybe you're someone that struggles with dairy. For me personally, this is an idea my uh -huh. husband and I had 10 years ago because I struggle with dairy and I love ice cream. <laughs> um, so the idea was first, you know, for me, for that. But if you have like food allergies, gluten allergies, or maybe you're watching your weight, mm -hmm. um, you just have a sweet tooth, or you want to eat more fruits and vegetables. It's for, you know, toddlers, it's for seniors. It's anybody that loves to eat something delicious, mm -hmm. but we maybe want to feel good about it, that's really who it's for. Mm -hmm. So for first time ever, it is okay for you to eat your ice cream anytime 
of the day. For breakfast even. We, we've had teachers contact us and say, we have kids come into school saying, I had ice cream for breakfast, mm -hmm. and what they had was bananas and strawberries, or you know, apples and pineapple, mm -hmm. um, but it tasted and felt like ice cream to them. Okay, and uh, processing it would be um, next, mm -hmm. but before that, uh, before you get into the nitty gritty of things, um, my other concern would be, you know how blender and uh, food processor can be so hard to maintain, especially cleaning them, mm -hmm. so how does Unanus work in that sense? It's an excellent question. It was really key in our design yeah. as well. And, and something to point out is people would tell us they thought they were doing this in their food processor and in their blender. Mm -hmm. And it's different. Again, we're not going to add any liquid in here like you have to in a blender. Okay. Same thing in a food processor to move it around and combine it. And again, in seconds you'll see it happen. But the cleanup, what we like to point out is this is where all the cleanup is contained. There are just these pieces in here. There's five in total. You just can clean that in warm soapy water and let it air dry. But it's also dishwasher safe. If you've got a dishwasher, Okay. You can go ahead and run it right through there. Seconds to clean up. Like so, it's again meant to be fun, fast, and easy. Mm -hmm. So you can throw in anything you want inside. Is there any don'ts that we should remember before embarking on Unanus? I usually say don't throw rocks. In there. <laughs> you know that's probably the one one thing to yeah. think about. Um, and the other is you know that fruit. Remember, overripe is really good. Mm -hmm. uh, and the other is let your fruit thaw ten minutes more or less. Um, for me at home, I only need to do it for a mm -hmm. few minutes. But that way, I'm not forcing the fruit through, I can push it through easily and still get that wonderful texture. So I just think let it sit out for a few minutes and it makes life that much easier. Mm -hmm. Okay Eileen, so this mm -hmm. is the moment of truth. You gotta <laughs> prove to me that I am wrong, that it can be done, that it is healthy, that we can eat it at any time of the day. So before that, um, introduce the ingredients that we have here. Alright, so we're gonna make three quick, okay. really easy recipes for you. This first one is just frozen bananas, uh -huh. frozen strawberries. Again, I use that overripe spotty banana in there because that's really sweet. So that's yeah. gonna be your first recipe. The other is going to be just frozen bananas, mm. but I'm going to throw in a couple of chocolate cookies in there just okay. to get a little crunch, a little chocolate mm. flavor. So play on what we call our cookies and cream, but no <laughs> cream. And then the last is no bananas, frozen mango, frozen pineapple. Mm. So you're going to just see again how we can make these just fast, easy, yummy. Um, and like you said, you can feel good about it and still get all your fiber, your vitamins, your minerals, but still think you're being a little more indulgent. Okay, guilty pleasures minus the guilty part. Right? That's exactly <laughs> it. That's totally it. Okay, yeah. come here. Let's all go. right, let's do it. All right. So there's just a quick bowl. Bananas and strawberries, that's all that we have here. Mm -hmm. And I like to alternate that fruit just so it does a little bit of the blending for mm -hmm. you. But there you go. Something, I mean that texture is just a start. It looks like real ice cream. Mm-hmm. And now again, all that you have is a really nutritious banana, some really nutritious strawberries in here. And now the moment of truth? Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> you get to try. And everyone's gonna be different too. Mmm. Texture, you get a little, I can hear a little bit of the strawberry yeah. in there too, and again, depends on how thought it is, but creamy. Yeah. Just the right amount of sugar. Yeah. The no natural added. way, no exactly. added. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Okay. All right. It's the winner. All right, it's the winner, but you might like some of the others. This is what I love. Everybody kind of finds their personal favorite because we all have preferences. Maybe mm. you like berries, maybe you prefer, you know, the melon, or you like a little chocolate. Everyone's a little different. And most of the fruits that you use are mm -hmm. those that you wouldn't want to eat them in their real form anyways because they're you know, overripe, mm -hmm. um, you know, like, like uh, bananas and strawberries, how they can be yucky at times. And when you turn mm -hmm. it into uh, something like this, into ice cream, it's, it's wonderful. You know, you just uh -huh. feel like you want to have them over and over mm -hmm. again. So where can one go to find out more about your nanas, especially on the recipe, on taking care of it, and also how do one get their hands on? Right, so, so there is the Yonanas Malaysia site, so that is uh, Y-O-N-A-N-A-S um, dot M 
why. Um, and you're gonna find the recipes. Mm -hmm. Like I just said, you're gonna find recipes on there. It's gonna tell you how to use it. All the stuff that we're chatting about today, it'll, it'll help remind you, again, mm -hmm. how to make it quick, easy, fun, delicious. And then even more like desserts beyond just like the bowls mm -hmm. of Yonanas. Okay, with that, thank you so much, Eileen, for your thank time. You. Uh, for you uh, who would like to have their hands on one of these uh, wonderful machines, then you can go to the website, as Eileen mm -hmm. uh, said just now. With that, I see you again next week on In Realty. Thank you.